I sense that you may be struggling to orient yourself to the world of Casio Protrek. In this video I will be your navigator up the Mount Manaslu of outdoor watch catalogues and we will lay out the ABCs of the history of Protrek. From its origins with the first triple sensor watch through to today's quad sensor compact and connected offerings, we start with the emergence of sensors within watches. The first sensor watches were temperature sensors in the Anadigi Temp from Citizen. Casio had their own TS range from 1982. I always liked the fact that Ayrton Senna wore one of these. There is an on wrist mode that attempts to compensate for the increased temperature of being on your wrist, but more accurate readings require the watch to be taken off and ideally left for 20 to 30 minutes, so not really the most practical. In 1986 there would be the introduction of the Casio depth gauge, with 1988 introducing an altimeter into proceedings with the Alti depth. The altimeter uses a pressure sensor, compares to the reference of the standard international atmosphere, with the variation then being translated into altitude. This could also be connected to an altitude alarm. This same sensor covers a barometer function, altitude and depth. 1989 brought the BM100 barometer, which uses the pressure sensor. The barometer series would include the BM500 weather station, including a tendency function which shows changes over time, the BM200 and later BM600. In 1992 we saw the Alti Thermo twin sensor, the ALT6000, with the funky horseshoe shape. This is a twin sensor due to including the pressure sensor we discussed before, and the temperature sensor. The final bit of the sensor picture, which was the digital compass, would arrive in 1992 with the CPW series, the CPW 100 and 200. These watches used a magnetic bearing sensor that detect terrestrial magnetism and therefore uses magnetic north, which is actually in Canada, rather than the true north. In timekeeping mode, you must keep the watch flat and the 12 o'clock pointed in the direction you're interested in, the display will show the bearing. There is an arrow also showing the magnetic north all times. At about the same time, Casio had been playing around with some outdoorsy style watches, with some Seymour Powell design watches with the Overland series, which had a navigation mode that can simulate the time it will take to get between two locations based upon the distance and average speed that you enter in. In 1994, Casio would bring the whole package together in a triple sensor watch, with the three sensors being one, the directional sensor that enables the compass, two, the pressure sensor that enables the barometer and altimeter function, and three, the temperature sensor the ATC1100. Fun fact, it was worn in the movie Hackers, which I must admit I've not seen. Let me know in the comments if it's worth a watch. There was already some overlapping of functions with other Casio brands, particularly G-Shock, the DW6500 in 1995, the precursor to 1997's Reisman, but it was the 1995 DPX range where the Protrek brand would apparently be first used with the DPX500. The DPX range also included the 200, 300, which was the thermo scanner, and 400. After the DPX range, 1996 would bring the PRT range, with the PRT10 with moon phase tidal display and thermometer, PRT20, which includes the altitude alarm, PRT30 Alti Thermo, and the PRT40, which included an auto EL backlight feature, where the backlight came on if you tilted your wrist more than 40 degrees, with this feature turned on. And I thought that this poster was fun. 1998 saw the release of the PRT4000 full metal titanium Protrek model, which was a fairly limited run and is a real collector's item. Even more niche was this Hunting World version. The PRT3000 here on the right was another titanium Protrek around the same time which didn't include the compass function. The PRT60 from 1998 had a trekking counter function which had a vibration sensor to track how many steps that you took, but you had to be wearing it on your waist with a band clip hanging free for this to work and it wouldn't even really work on your wrist, so it doesn't seem that useful to me. This PRT600 Raid Gaulwazi was a rather random limited edition that I saw linked to the 9th edition of this adventure race that took place in Ecuador. There is a whole film documentary on the race taking place in that year if you're interested and I saw a few watches on a quick scan. It seems it wasn't the first time with this Casio collaboration because there was also this 1995 model from the 7th Raid. Twin set technology where an LCD layer would hover over an analog display was everywhere within the Cassia range from its introduction in 1995. This would include Protrek with the PRT50 in 1997, where the LCD is seen here almost magically floating over the analog display. This reviewer on YouTube notes the skeletonized hands, which means you can still see the display nicely when using the EL backlight in the dark. 
the PRT70 was a slightly different looking analog digital style ProTrek from around 2000, I think with a more traditional small digital display. Now I've not been able to untangle where ProTrek starts and Pathfinder begins, but I do know in 1997 there was the PAL range with the 100 and 200, and a whole bunch of PRL models with the 10 and 20. I like these Lay and WWF Panda Park models. This 30 bird life model with Trek Encounter, the 100 and 200, and this steel version I thought was particularly cool. An obscure one I found was this limited edition referencing the French naturalist Jean-Henri Fabre, and a quote from one of his books which apparently translates as, it's always a new surprise. Love it. A lot of these use that Lay branding. A quick Google suggests that Lay means grassland, so perhaps it's just a sub-brand related to that kind of outdoor environment. The United States Department of Defense developed the Global Positioning System, or GPS, a series of Navstar satellites managed by the GPS Master Control Station at Colorado Springs. There was an operational network of 24 satellites from 1993. Casio ProTrek would have a world's first with GPS in a watch from 1999 with the PRT-1 GPJ watch named the Satellite Navi, which leveraged 27 US satellites. Today we have hundreds of them. It was first debuted at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in 1999, and here is a later press release from Casio. The PRT2 version came out the following year with a PC link capability, this 20% smaller size, and included a charger attachment. The use of three satellites enables you to triangulate the global position of the watch, and is how you set the position. The watch contained 200 preloaded landmarks of major mountains. You can also use graphical mapping displays of different scales, mark waypoints, and track direction and speed. The manual for this is a sizable read. The PRG50 and PAG40 models in 2000 had the capability of measuring up to 10,000 altitude and used a duplex LCD screen where the compass, barometric pressure and altitude hovers over the main display when activated. In 2002, Casio would utilise version 2 of triple sensor tech with the PRG50, which rather than battery-based power of the first generation, would adopt a tough solar rechargeable solar battery system. 2003's PRG60 had an analogue display with the Wild About Watches channel ably demonstrating the setting of it here, with 2004 bringing the PRG70, 2005 the PRG80 and PAG80, and PRG90 continuing with similar stylings. The PRW1000 was ProTrek's first radio-controlled solar watch and was released in 2005. The PRW1300 or PAW1300 had a thinner case, so it was less bulky than a lot of the previous ProTreks, which it achieved by using high-density mounting technology that optimised the layout, downsized the LSI, and used a thin solar cell. Movie fact, it was worn in Avatar. The PRW and PAW1500 added 200 meter water resistance, which Casio claimed made it suitable for rafting and yacht racing, and had tide graph and moon graph displays. PRX2000 moved on from the multiband 5 of watches like the PAW1500 and incorporated multiband 6. I think it may have been this watch that started the prestige line known as Manaslu, named after the mountain first summited by a Japanese expedition in 1956. The regular model was the PAW2000 or PRW2000, marketed as a slim-lined multiband 6 solar-powered model. The PRG200 from 2009 nicely packages most of the features we've discussed, with the PRG130 being another chunkier model that offers 200 meter water resistance. The PAG240 or PRG240 is a nice mid-range model that I think looks quite distinctive with the chunky bits of the compass bezel. The mountaineer Zahan Billamoria wore the watch in his role as a Casio ambassador, and I think it may be a PAG240 or a similar one being worn here on board the International Space Station, so a ProTrek has been to space. The astronaut Chris Cassidy has been seen wearing a ProTrek multiple times. The PRW2500, PRG270 and PRG280 continue this similar aesthetic. Some watches that jumped out a little bit as I was going through the list of watches that were maybe a little bit more incremental developments with similar looks were the PAS400 in 2003, which was a fishing oriented watch, including fishing alarm function. A cool spot was that this was apparently worn by Robert De Niro in the film Little Fockers. Probably not the coolest film reference, but De Niro still wore it. The other watch that looked a bit visually different was the PRG100 from 2006, which just jumps out as a distinctive look for me, and I love that dot matrix style display for the time, which changes to a graphical display of the sensor functions. Before we come back to the fancier Pro Tracks, there was a couple of other deviations that I stumbled across. The first is the Pathfinder going seawards with the C Pathfinder range. This amazing condition SPF10 has a module from 2000 and has a thermoscanner, tidal display and moon phase. This SPF40 C Pathfinder was apparently worn by Hugh Laurie in-house, 
the series continuing with the SPF 50, 2003's SPF 60, 2004's SPF 100, and 2006 SPW 1000. A nice little niece range the CPAF finder that I don't see many folks talking about. The second range I wanted to have a brief detour to is Casio's more basic range that deploys Protrek like functions, or Protrek Lite as many have called them, the SGW range. The SGW 100 Sport Gear Watch in the basic Casio range could easily be mistaken for a Protrek despite being substantially cheaper, as could the SG200 outgear model. The SGW1000 looks a lot like the PAG240 watches we were discussing before, but back to the serious tech. Now the PRW5000 or PAW5000 introduced the so-called tough movement, which checks whether the hands are in alignment every hour and automatically corrects any errors. The promotion of this model was linked with Stephen Segrist, the professional alpinist, and in the UK there was a big campaign with Alan Hinkers where he attempted to climb the highest peaks in 8 days. And here is some advertising related to the PRW5100 model. Protrek would deploy the so-called triple sensor version 3 in 2013 in the PRW3000. This reduced the size of the sensors dramatically and reduced power needs, and this would extend the compass bearing continuous measurement, would just take one second to measure altitude, and altitude would be one meter rather than five meter units. This is my personal favorite style of Protrek, as it's the start of the smaller sizings for the skinnier wristed like me. The 3100 continued in the same vein, and the 3500 is a chunkier version that came out in 2015 with 200 meter water resistance. That is Kevin Richardson in shot, a South African zookeeper who is a long time Casio ambassador. The same watch is promoted by Eric Jackson, a champion kayaker, with the water resistance being tied in here with the promotion, and Eric Stensland, the nature photographer, was another ambassador that got behind the advertising campaign for the PRG3500. My own Protrek model is the PRW30 on the left here, with the PAG30 essentially being the same model. These come in a variety of different versions, and I think they both look cool, as well as packing a lot of tech with the Triple Sense version 3. Definitely recommend, and I've hardly taken mine off since I got it. The PRX7000 in 2012 introduced smart access into the Protrek range from the Oceanus T1000 series, which uses an electronic crown switch and multi-motor drive to enable easy and precise control over analog functions. The PWX8000T7JR was an adapted form of the PRX7000 and was a special commemorative edition of the Manaslu series with funky coloured hands and a special clasp to honour Hirotaka Takeuchi who was the first Japanese mountaineer to conquer all 14 peaks over 8000 metres. The PRW6000 from 2014 combined the previous two technologies and was an Anna Digi watch that had smart access and triple sensor version 3 and there were special versions of both the PRW3000 and PRW6000 in the Karakum Black series, named after the mountain range that hosts K2 that has black gravel. The PRW7000 had a fun limited edition model, the OSBT Namiki Limited Watch, a collaboration with Toshinari Namiki, a professional Japanese angler, and there was a cool gold iron plated version. The PRX8000T Manaslu apparently had input from Hirotaka Takeuchi, which has had a cool carbon fibre bezel version and a 60th anniversary of the Ascent version. 2016's PRG600 had a cool safari angle to the design, and Joe Rogan wears a Protrek PRG650 YBE3. The PRW50 and PRW60 continues the PRW30's more compact design for outdoor watches, but includes the analogue display too in the so-called climber line. The G-Shock Golf Master model was the first to use a quad sensor in the Casio range with the GWNQ1000. This makes sense as the ethos behind that watch was strongman against the sea, with the additional sensor being the water depth sensor. But in the Protrek range, the fourth sensor would be an accelerometer, which would act as a step counter, a vast improvement on the Trek counter of decades past, where you couldn't even wear the watch. This would also have the ability to link to your phone with Bluetooth, and the Protrek connected app. The Casio PRT B70 dials up the water resistance to 200 meters and has fishing functions built into the watch, such as the fish and time feature. Now Casio have gone down the smartwatch route, and I noticed Russell the Mad Watch Collector is Mr. Smartwatch now with his GBD200, and in this case the smartness is with the Protrek line and the WSD range. The first was the WSD F10 in 2016 with Android Wear, later Wear OS by Google, and dual layer LCD with monochrome and color layer. The tools button provides an interface that can access the various sensors, whereas apps brings you to apps. The WSD F20 in 2017 added GPS, offline maps from Mapbox, and some updated looks with the WSD F20A being a slightly cheaper version. The WSD F21HR added a heart rate sensor, with the WSD F30 being a slimmed down version with slightly better battery life. One last area of pro we have to mention 
before closing out his innovative materials. We've seen titanium and carbon fibre like on the PRW73X on screen now, as well as straps like this fun Elnis Creative collaboration on the PRW60 model. A particular recent focus has been using biomass plastic, which is a renewable form of plastic that can be used across various components, and this is the PRW3400. With the PRW6611 and 6621 having the same treatment, and the PRW61 having this cool khaki and black colouring. The PRG51NJ is a Nature Conservation Society of Japan collaboration and has a cool case back. And the final, more obviously branded model I'll throw in here is the PRW6630 Nanga Outdoor Clothing Brand collaboration, complete with the slogan Believe in Your Adventures there on the dial. And it comes with what looks like a little sleeping bag case for the watch. Hopefully you won't be needing your sleeping bag after this long dive into the world of ProTrek. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and it's helped you learn more about the range. If you like this, you might like my introductory video to the history of Cassier more generally, which can be accessed by clicking the card here. I'm still a small channel so all subscriptions are super appreciated. See a link in the description for my Buy Me A Coffee page and I hope you have a great rest of your day.